Hello friends, today we are going to see the unit number 2 in that measure of dispersion. Okay. So, your dispersion is a measure of the variation of the item, the degree to which the numerical data tends to spread above an average value is called the variation and the dispersion of the data. Dispersion is a measure of extent to which individual item varies. A measure of variation or the dispersion describes the degree of scattered shown by the observation and it uh, and is usually measured as an average deviation about some central value. The measurement of uh, scatteredness of the mass of figure uh, in the series about an average is called as your measure of variation or the dispersion. So, in that first we are going to see first that is what your range. Now, what do you mean by range? The range is the simplest measure of the dispersion. It is a rough measurement of a dispersion. It depends upon only the extreme values item. Okay, only the extreme values and not on all the item. It does not tell us anything about the distribution of the value. In the series relative to a typical value, thus your range is what? Your range is equals to largest value minus smallest value. Okay, it is a relative measure of dispersion. You can denote it as what? R is equals to R is equals to L minus S, where your coefficient of range is equals to L minus S means what? The largest value minus smallest value divided by largest value plus smallest value. Okay, so we will solve one example based on this. So, the data is given. Find the range of weight, weights of 7 student from the following. Okay, so this is the data available. This is the individual data. Okay, so what we are going to do? We are going to range is equals to what? Largest minus value minus smallest value. So, in this distribution, your largest value is what? 43 and the smallest value is 27. So, we are going to subtract these two values. So, the this is your formula and we are going to subtract 43 minus 27. You will get a range as what? 16. Okay. Now, next we are going to find the coefficient of range. So, your coefficient of range is equals to largest value minus smallest value divided by largest value plus smallest value. So, we know that our largest value is 43 minus smallest value is 27. So, 43 minus 27 divided by 43 plus 27 okay, which is equals to 16 by 17 and the final answer is 0 0.23. Okay. So, this is about the range. Your range is only depend upon the extreme values of the distribution. We are not going to include the in between values. Okay, We are only dependent upon the uh, extreme values of your distribution. That is your smallest value and the largest value. Then next topic we have as interquartile range. Okay, Now, as the name suggests interquartile range, your distribution is dependent upon your interquartile range will be depend on the middle portion of the distribution. Okay, So, the interquartile range is also called as your mid spread. Okay, Measures the spread within the middle half of the values in the data set. So, as to minimize the influence of outliers. Okay, So, we are not going to include the extreme values okay, in the calculation of the range. So, your interquartile range is denoted by IQR which is equals to Q3 minus Q1. Now, we know what do you mean by Q3 and Q1. Q3 is your upper quartile okay, and Q1 is your lower quartile. Okay, or you can say third quartile and the first quartile. Okay, so this is what your interquartile range. This, uh, if we plot one line, okay, in middle you will have your Q2 means what your median. Okay, this is your starting value, or you can say lowest value. This is the highest value or the ending value of the distribution. In between you will have your Q1 first quartile and the third quartile. Your interquartile range will. De, uh, denote this area. Okay. So, we will see how to calculate that also. After that, you have quartile deviation. 
so quartile deviation is the half distance between the lower quartile and the upper quartile it in indicates the average amount by which the two quartiles differ from the median okay so your quartile deviation is denoted by qd and it is equals to what q3 minus q1 divided by 2 as it is what it is an average okay it is going to indicate the average so q3 minus q1 divided by 2 after that coefficient of quartile deviation coefficient of quartile deviation is equals to what q3 minus q1 divided by q3 plus q1 so we are going to solve an example based on this so this is your example they have said what calculate the semi interquartile range and quartile coefficient from the following data okay so in the table uh, you have age in years you can denote it as x okay and the number of member that is what f now this data is what kind of data this is your uh, discrete data okay so the age are like 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 and the number of member are like uh, 3 61 132 1 by 3 140 likewise okay so we need to find for the interquartile range and the quartile coefficient we need to find what your q1 value and q3 value now if you want to find q1 and q3 first you're going to find the cumulative frequency okay now you know how to find cumulative frequency we're going to arrange the data in a tabular format in a vertical fashion okay so first we're going to we're going to find the less than cumulative frequency so first we're going to write 3 as it is okay so 3 3 plus 61 so 3 plus 61 is a 64 that is your next cumulative frequency so 64 plus 132 it is 196 196 plus 153 is equals to 349 likewise we are going to find this cumulative frequency column okay so what is your total number of members your 543 is what summation of f okay means what your n okay now as this is what your discrete series so we're going to apply the formulas for q1 and q3 for the discrete series only okay so your q1 is equals to what size of n plus 1 divided by fourth item now you know n n is what summation of frequency and what is your summation of frequency 5 4 3 plus 1 divided by 4 okay fourth item so here you have 5 4 3 plus 1 divided by 4 so your final answer is what 1 3 6 okay now this is not your q1 we found only the position of your q1 so at the position 1 sixth position 1 3 sixth position you'll have your q1 okay now where to find this 1 3 6 you're going to find your 1 3 6 over here so it says what from 0 to 3 it the values lies in age of uh, sorry in 20 years okay from 4 to 46 the age is 30 okay from 65 to 196 the age is what 40 so your 136 lies in this class so you can consider 40 as what your first quartile okay okay this is as what your first quartile q1 okay so 40 years is what your first quartile likewise we're going to find q2 now what is the formula for q2 3 and plus 1 divided by 4 okay again n is 5 4 3 so 3 into 5 4 3 plus 1 divided by 4 okay after the calculation you'll get the value as what 408 okay now where to find this 408 your 408 will be over somewhere here okay why at 50 your range end at what 349 okay so your 408 will lie in this okay so q3 will be what 60 okay now we have our q1 
one and Q three. Now we're going to write the formula for your inter semi intercortile range. Okay, so semi intercortile range is equals to what? Q three minus Q one divided by two. Where your Q three is what? Sixty minus Q one is what? Forty. So sixty minus forty divided by two, which is equals to twenty by two. So ten years it will be what? Your intercortile. Or you have a cortile deviation, or you can say semi intercortile range. Okay, now cortile coefficient is equals to what? Q three minus Q one divided by Q three plus Q one means what? Sixty minus forty divided by what? Sixty plus forty, which is equals to zero point two. This is what your coefficient of cortile. Thank you.